seems like we are finally a winner. Okay, my name is Hartmut Schröder from a company called Juniper. Uh, who is this company? Everyone knows our number first competitor called Cisco. And well, for Juniper, what, what our aim is to enable basically um, unfederated internet and that's what our mission was 20 years ago. This company has at that time, 20 years ago, saved the internet from its growth rate because we were the first company pulling together, going from away from the paradigm of the time in software-based forwarding computers uh, with, the uh, with the decomposition of the control plane and ASIC-based forwarding. Nowadays, ASIC-based forwarding is what you will see in every modern uh, router in the world. There's absolutely no uh, discussion about this technology anymore. Um, now, what's the next pitch after 20 years? Now, Juniper is again at the mission to save clouds from their own growth rates. And that's what uh, Contrail is uh, providing you. Um, the way, uh, but over 20 years, the paradigm changed a little bit. Now, the way we define the interaction between clouds and the outside environment is going to change the way um, accordingly to how the internet is built based on uh, BGP signaling and MPLS as a forwarding technology. And now we bring this technology to the data center where the cloud is hosted, providing you the same level of integration as you can have with, um, with uh, existing technologies taken from what is existing today in the internet. So what are we trying to achieve uh, with the contract approach? Um, we want to provide you a full virtualization of the entire network inside your data center. Which means wherever a virtual machine is running, it can be connected to any other virtual machine that is inside your entire data center. And we are not lo looking at a couple of hosts, we are, we are looking at thousands of hosts. In traditional approaches, you will see in a minute, you always have boundaries inside your data center. So you cannot connect everyone with any other server on the other side of your data center and make this a seamless experience. And this is what Contrail as a technology will provide is to, to go away from traditional approaches with uh, providing integration into a VLAN and then stitching VLANs together and going away from software-based neutron routers to a distributed framework um, to do that. And at the same time, usually you would say, okay, there's a, there's a company knowing routing and switching. At the same time, we say, okay, whatever you have Inside your, data switch, uh, inside your data center as switching and routing, it doesn't matter. We provide you a framework that you can use in any data center as long as it's forwarding IP addresses. And that's uh, something you, will, uh, you get all, uh, all the time from every data center, otherwise you do not have this integration. Now let's look at how um, and the result stack you have multiple flavors of how you integrate uh, the networking piece. Usually if you don't use our technology, it's either the Linux based approach or it's Open vSwitch or ML2 um, interfaces towards the switching environment. And what it causes is that you spin your workload and you dedicate functions and you want to avoid that for instance, uh, a VLAN that you use for security separation is spread across your entire data center if you have a thousand of nodes, because that will be quite messy. 
and you will experience your switches usually have a 4K boundary of how many VLANs they can tag in and out. Um, so trying to enhance this is quite messy and what Ju the Juniper approach will allow you to use our technology to seamlessly integrate wherever the server inside your data center is hosted. If you use our technology, as I said, we will allow you to use every virtual machine who, wherever it is on any host in your data center to be connected with every other virtual machine and to the outside network, no matter on how you do that. Um, what you use as a transport technology inside your data center is something that you, you can choose for many designs. You can use a modern spine leaf architecture, you can have a flat L2 network. The contrary approach does not attempt by default to integrate into this environment. The approach is to overlay it with a, trans with a tunnel transport technology. So, um, with, uh, when we, we, will, um, we, we come to uh, how the approach works, but let's um, also see how we enhance OpenStack. Uh, with Contrail technology, you get something that we call a network policy. A network policy in, in OpenStack, you already know the concept of OpenStack security groups, and they are usually bound to specific um, virtual machines and not the networking piece. Now here, with, um, with the usage of um, virtual network policies, you can define how traffic can move from a virtual network that you have just defined, say it's a green network, to a red network for the same tenant and specifically allow the traffic that you want to pass between these two networks. So you do not bind the security towards the machine, you bind the security and the forwarding that is allowed to the virtual network that you have created. So that's a different approach in how you can grant security policies by defining it for, for the subnet, for the virtual network that you have created, and then define who can speak to each other which networks are connected to each other and which networks are probably not connected to each other. Um, and on top of that, if you use such a policy from Contrain, then what it allows you to extend what OpenStack can, you, can do uh, in the regular case for you, you can change the topology with, with the usage of our SDN controller to force traffic to either virtual or physical instances that are inspecting the traffic. Uh, a normal example would be, um, say you have a web server farm and you have some databases, both are sitting in different networks, but they belong to the same tenant, to the same open stack project, now you see that there is a security breach and you want to inject an, an, uh, a virtual SQL injector, uh, SQL injection protection uh, virtual machine. Um, so usually you would have to, to tell your applications that the default gateway is changed because you want to direct traffic from one network not going to the default gateway, you wanted to have it through a virtual machine that implements this service. Now Contrail will change the topology to force the traffic seamlessly for the application to go through this virtual washing machine, firewall, whatever you have, to, to steer the traffic selectively through what we call a service chain. 
And this is something that is um, also inbound with Etsy NFV. Um, in Etsy NFV terminology, uh, they call it a service graph. Um, we call it service chaining. I think this is more has more grip. You can easily more understand it than saying it's a graph. Okay. Now, how do we implement this? Now, I'm, I need to go to a little bit of more technical details. Um, the realization of virtual networks and how we can connect virtual machines to each other depends on two new units. Um, at the top, we have OpenStack as an orchestration engine, and we are plugging into the neutron networking. So, that's how, generically, um, you can attach any of your networking instances to OpenStack. So, um, all commands come from OpenStack, so you will still be able to use OpenStack APIs to create like virtual networks, and we will get the appropriate messages from the OpenStack orchestrator, and there is uh, a central SDN controller, usually there are three of them for backup and redundancy reasons, who has the entire knowledge of all routes inside your single data center. So no matter where you spin up virtual machines, it knows everything. It knows um, which IP addresses are, which host IP addresses are on each server, and what is the virtual machine connected that um, Nova has distributed there and spin up. And then we have to then we have to distribute information to a distributed piece, uh, which is here the uh, control virtual router, which is basically a replacement for uh, you have Linux bricks or Open vSwitch. Now you rip that piece out and you replace it with a control virtual router, which will then be the um, translation engine between the virtual networks uh, in Linux, usually tap interfaces in KVM, towards the physical network infrastructure cards where you have your IP addresses assigned to the physical environment. Now, you cannot escape from any virtual machine um, sending traffic to anything else. Either the traffic is hairpinned on the same compute node, just to another virtual interface, but it has to go through the virtual router, and when traffic has to go from one virtual machine to the next host in, in your environment, what we add is a tunnel information that takes the raw Ethernet packet from the virtual machine, encapsulates it, and sends it over to the next compute node who does the decapsulation and then forwards the traffic to the virtual machine as your, so, uh, as your destination IP address. And with this, we reach a complete independency from what you have in your physical infrastructure. How you, how you, um, how you transport the traffic from one compute node to another compute node. Inside the virtual, in, uh, in the, the physical interface cards have their fixed IP addresses, and those are used in the outer tunnel information. And then a little bit more information is added to know which virtual machine you are targeting on the other end, and then the traffic is forwarded. Now, which technology we are using here is we have currently implemented three flavors of overlay tunnel. Uh, we have implemented MPLS over GIE, we have implemented MPLS over UDP and VXNAR. So no matter what you prefer, you can select which method you want and then the, uh, the framework will make sure that the tunnels are built appropriate. 
because the, the virtual router does not see all the global information that the SDN controller sees. The virtual uh, router of control in every compute node just see what he needs to know how he is connected to other virtual machines. That's his own mission. And he gets this information from the central controller. Now what happens if you use something which I just called service chaining? Service chaining will introduce a topology change. Instead of having the traffic from green going directly to red, we are the, the, we are in the la, as in the last picture that would be possible, we force the traffic to go to the next hop is a virtual machine that has an interface into this green network, but it's not the default gateway, we just forward the packet internally to that, um, to that service instance. And that service instance is a regular virtual machine. All it needs is just two interfaces instead of one, because it's not an application which has an IP address which you are addressing, it's something that may not, may have or may not have an IP address, all it sees it has an ingress interface and an egress interface. And all its mission is, if a packet arrives on the ingress interface, I copy it over to the egress interface and I apply the service. Whatever this service is, is it a firewall, is it a, say, a virus inspection machine? You can, you can build what you want. All it does is, packet comes in, packet is forwarded to the other interface and vice versa, and I apply the service. And everything else is a regular OpenStack controlled virtual machine that you spin up. And you just change the policy to say, okay, I want this machine to be included in the path between these two networks. That's the mission of service chaining um, done by policy change. And that's where SDN comes in the picture, because you can have a network that is directly connected, so red, uh, green can talk to red directly, as in the last picture, and then you just say, okay, I have this new virtual machine, do the topology change for me. And that's what the SDN controller will deliver. Now, in the last two pictures we had just Compute nodes talking to compute nodes. So that's uh, east-west traffic you have. Now, at some point in time, you will have to go to the outside. You will have to go to the internet. You will have to talk to the WAN. So we need an integration into something that at the border of your data center, the router towards the WAN or the internet, or even if it's just plain IP, acts as a border gateway. And Contrail has decided to use the technology that usually is already in place, because if you, if you are a network service provider, this is not an unknown thing. You use signaling protocols like BGP, and you, and you use in your one maybe MPLS-based forwarding. But what you need to have is just signaling towards the data center gateway. So, the control data center controller connects via, directly via BGP to your data center gateway. And that's all it does. So, if, if, if traffic comes on from the outside and wants to go to any destination IP address, that has a virtual machine, then we, tell the, uh, then we tell the data center router, okay, your next stop is the physical IP address of the compute node, and you have to add a label, and then you are addressing this virtual machine. Okay? Um, don't, don't get worried about me using BGP, MPLS, and this stuff. You don't see that. If, if, if you have your data center ready, or the virtual machines, they don't see nothing of that. It's just a first time setup. 
And the first time set up on this data center router, it's maybe 20 lines of code that you have to, to do to just enable the PGP, PGP talk to the, to the data center controller and being enabled to do the forwarding. Yeah. So um, we know that usually people who have an enterprise background say, okay, PGP, I'm out of this. No, it's simple. It's just 20 lines of code to implement this on your data center router and off you go. And the rest, there's no integration into the physical environment. So you don't need to know this. All you're talking is IP addresses and the tunnels will do the forwarding automatically for you. And then, uh, uh, last but not least, how do we integrate into bare metal? You always have something that you cannot load the control in virtual router. Yeah? Because that's something that if I want to have to spin up virtual machines, you need to do in some way. Um, so what happens in, if that's the case? Well, there is then definitely we need to integrate into the switch that has the plain Ethernet connection to this server, the appliance or what you have, whatever it is. So we need to integrate to that and usually what people use here is uh, they use top of rack switch which have the VXLAN gateway functionality and we connect to those switches via OVSDB as a signaling protocol and then we can and then we can make these workloads appearing um, seamlessly in, in your data center as infrastructure. We also provide uh, stuff like um, floating IP implementation because we implement the floating IP um, NAT traversal on the data center router and so your virtual machine doesn't know that you are changing the IP address but that's implemented then on the data center router. So we also, if that's known that your, uh, that your bare metal server needs to get a floating IP, we can provide this. Now, multi-vendor integration. So, first of all, by default, you get uh, a kernel module which you implement into your Linux system and that uh, usually KVM is the dominant hypervisor. But that doesn't say we cannot provide the same functionality to other hypervisors. And here is an example of how we integrate into different hypervisors and the example is the VMware ESXi hypervisor. Now, Contrail or Juniper or, well, let's say Anybody is not allowed to place any product into the hypervisor of VMware. It's a proprietary hypervisor and you are not allowed to extend it. Otherwise you lose support from VMware. That's the mission here. So what we do here as an alternative is that we spin up a virtual machine on every compute node so we are not integrated into the hypervisor, but we steer the traffic first to this virtual machine and this virtual machine connects it then internally to all the virtual machines on the ESXi um, server. And uh, with the latest build um, in version 3.0, the whole stuff can be integrated into OpenStack. And it's run simultaneously KVM workloads and ESXi workloads. It's just a little bit different on the, on the KVM. Um, compute nodes, we are part of the, of the kernel as a module. Uh, on the ESXi hypervisor, we need to spin up a dedicated virtual machine doing this forwarding transport. Okay? But it's for customers who have legacy ESXi deployments, they want to have a migration path. And that's what we are providing here. I'm going to skip this. Docker. 
Um, sure, we can integrate into Docker as an environment. The same technology will be used to provide the same network and the same abstractions to any Docker container that you have. May it be in OpenStack, may it be in Kubernetes. Um, that's your freedom of choice. The, the technology will provide the same functionality um, to any Docker container that you develop. No, I'm not going into service chaining. Heat templates. Um, we have so service chaining is something that's new to OpenStack. There's no native IP, API you can use today. People are working on that, and hopefully we'll have something that we can. Uh, use as an API today. Um, for those kind of cases, we provide you heat extensions that you can then leverage when you have to roll out those things and have to connect all these different pieces um, in this environment. No. Last but not least, when we when we integrate our Contrail virtual router, we are sitting in every, with every packet that you send from the virtual environment to anything that's physical or to the, to the one environment, we see these kind of packets. Now, Contrail also implements a reporting engine that allows you to, to have and collect all this data into a database and that database you can harvest after an event has happened and you don't know what was the status in my network one hour ago, which virtual machines has talked to each other. You can, conduct, you can extract this database in, in, um, in, real, in, in charts and then analyze it or you just go with a raw data stream and do your own reporting on that. Um, that's a function we, we also provide that we collect all these flow information and you can um, you can use that so with Silometer you don't get this kind of information it's not retro uh, uh, perspective you can't consult any database uh, after a certain period of time and say okay you, this guy and this guy have talked to each other and they they were transporting each, uh, so much bytes Um, if you want to inspect traffic, that's possible. Um, we allow you to launch a virtual Wireshark instance and then you can select which traffic you want to inspect in this instance. Otherwise you would be running around connecting to monitoring ports and trying to get something out of sense with that. Of course Contrail provides you all the steering functions to send a copy of that traffic to your analyzing uh, image and the Wireshark instance here is an example of what you can analyze. Essentially, every traffic that you set is relevant for me uh, that I want to know. Um, then, uh, for people who want to know what the status is, as I said, you, we, you do not need to integrate into the physical environment, into your switching environment. But there are people who want to know what the physical environment is doing and how the traffic is routed. Now we use standard interface like LLDP, SNMP and SFlow to gather that information and present it to you in a topology chart. And if you want to extend that, you can also select a certain flow and say, okay, let me know how the traffic actually goes through my network so that I know um, what is impacting this or um, how I can debug and where I have to send people to see if something goes wrong. Thank you. Um, how many minutes have I been over? <laughs> Sorry. It was quite technical, but you see, um, once you deployed it, the virtual machine doesn't know about it. All you see is enabled business. And that's the important piece here. Thank you.